Hello Fix fans, we're back in the shed and today we've got a Nerf Terror Scout and a fancy lens for a drone. Why do these two need to come together? I'll tell you now. So if you're a Nerfer, you'll know all about the Terror Scout. It's essentially a Nerf tank, an RC tank with a Nerf Rapid Stripe type blaster bolted to the top. It spins around, it can angle up and down, it can fire, but it's got one major problem. The way you use the Terror Scout is you have a little remote control and you drive it around, getting feedback from its camera, which is just here, on a little screen. Now, there's quite a lot of lag on that little screen. You'll turn the Terror Scout and then you'll see quite some time later the little screen move its image. That's a problem. But why is it a problem? If you're a gamer, you'll know about input lag. If you move your mouse and click to fire and then the game responds much later, you're not competitive, it's not fun, and if it takes too long, it actually breaks some games. Similarly with the Terra Scout, it's hilarious driving it around, but if you drive it into something because you didn't see it coming until too late or you fire at someone and they've gone by the time the Nerf Dart gets over to them, that's not very good. And we all know if we've had a play with one of these how frustrating that can be. In the gaming world, you want somewhere in the region of 100 millis seconds or less of lag. 70 probably is okay. 30, 40 milliseconds, pretty average. Um, anything lower than that and you're lightning quick. Now this has lag in the order of seconds, so tens of times more laggy than your computer game which might be giving you some grief. And what we're aiming to do with this is to take some of that lag away and see if we can get this into a more playable or more usable state for when you're driving it around. So Steve, you'll say, what's that got to do with the lens for a DJI Phantom 3? Well, I'll have to do a bit of explanation as to how that came about. Now, when I got this, I'd fired it up at somebody and they'd gone, had some lunch, had a cup of tea and come back and sat down long before the dart had even got anywhere near them. That was all, you know, the Terra Scout's terrible, terrible laggy fault. The little sensor inside this guy uh, that processes the media from the camera up front has quite limited bandwidth, and the camera has lots and lots of onboard trickery to deal with light levels. And ultimately, the more work you give it dealing with light levels, particularly bright light, the less ability it has to send the picture quickly to your transmitter. So you'll notice if you have one of these, you can run it around in the dark and low light. It's pretty snappy. As soon as you get it out on a bright, sunny day, there's like a second of lag you know, you can, you can barely use the thing, which is, which is terrible if you're nerfing outside. For example, here it is chasing a light around the room in my house. That's pretty snappy. There's no real input lag there. It looks, it looks pretty good. That's quite usable, but obviously you can't go around nerfing like that. So now when I got this, I immediately Googled Terra Scout, terribly laggy. I looked on Reddit. Say what you like about the nerf Reddit. It had the answer for me here. So to improve this lag, we've got to reduce the amount of light. Sounds simple. And in fact, the Reddit thread that I read said, hey, just stick some sunglasses on it. Now I did try that. I got the lens from some sunglasses, plonked it over the front. Not particularly good, no difference, really. I then found some architectural window tinting film I had kicking around and some washers, a bit of blue tack, and stuck something to the front of it that really reduced the light quite drastically. And I saw an effect on my transmitter. I thought, wow, we've got it down below a level that the transmitter can now do less work dealing with the light and more work sending the image to my receiver. So the lens then. This is a neutral density filter. It works by rotating and and as you rotate it, it blocks light at varying levels. You see it goes from very dark to very light, depending on how I rotate it. All very good. How does such a thing work? Well, this isn't a photography lesson, but you have two polarizing filters put together. Now, polarizing filters have a bunch of lines on them and they take away polarized light. So you can get lovely, lovely sky and water pictures. Now, as much as I want my Terra Scout to be shooting amazing footage of the sky and water as I go around my Nerf war, that's not really what we're trying to achieve here. And with a neutral density filter, what happens is you put two of these polarizing filters, one on top of the other. One has lots and lots of bars going one way restricting light. One has lots and lots of bars going another way restricting light and then you spin those around and the more you spin them the more total light is taken away from your camera sensor and the darker the image appears. Useful in drones, also useful on these. Now of course this is a 30 millimeter lens with a thread on it designed to go on the front of a drone. This is a Nerf toy with a plastic nub sticking out the top of it that's about 15 mil wide. So how do we make these play well together? Well first thing I did was take the Terra Scout apart and measure up the little camera housing that's inside here, go to the 3D printer and print my own so that I could amend it to accept that lens. Now, I did a lot of work messing around with these things, and I'll show you a bit of that now. There we go. What we're interested in is inside here. There are two ports at the end of your Terra Scout. The big one at the top is a microphone. The little one at the bottom is your camera. Now, the bit we're going to replace is this bit here. Here's my printed replacement. And what I'm going to do is then on CAD software, make a much, much larger mount, which takes the lens. The lens is a little bit bigger. I put that on the bottom because that's where the camera goes. I think on my version, I'm going to put the camera at the top. It makes it easier for the lens to clear everything. Moment of truth, Terra Scout fans. I've tucked the mic and the camera out of the way for this. They're not connected up or the camera isn't. Try and get the casing back on, line it up. There we go. If we have a look from the front, we can see that the casing's nicely lined up and closed. I've got a bit of space here to work on CAD to um, create somewhere for our lens to go. I'm going to put it about there, I think. Okay, so that was all well and good, but I 
got to the point where I was thinking, do you know what? What am I going to sacrifice here if this thing goes head on into a wall? What's going to get damaged? And I concluded that really, if I'm replacing the entire camera housing with a, with a printed version, yes, it looks cool. Yes, it looks like a UFO. But what would happen is as soon as it hits something, the whole camera housing could potentially get damaged and damage the camera inside. And, you know, it's only a little rubbish camera, but I'm pretty sure they're hard to get hold of and I don't want to have to try. So I figured that if I in fact made a sort of contact lens that goes on the outside of the housing, which is what we have on here, then at least if everything got smashed into a wall, and bear in mind there's a big muzzle in the way, then this would fall off, my lens would fall off and maybe get damaged. It wasn't particularly expensive and that would be fine. The Terra Scout would survive intact. And also, you know, if you've seen any of my channel mods, before. I like them to be reversible. I like them to be minimally invasive. I don't really want to have to take my Terra Scout apart to stick a lens on it. So what I came up with was this. It's a little 3D printed adapter. It was actually quite a pain to get all the dimensions right because there's a bunch of stuff that needs to happen. We have to have the right diameter for the lens and enough tolerance for it to screw on with a thread because I don't really want to print a thread that fine. So it has to just screw onto the plastic. Happy with that. Very good. It needs to be securable in some way and to do that there's a natural sort of pinch point on here. There's not a huge amount of plastic, but um, there's a natural pinch point against which you can drive a bolt or a screw to kind of clip this on. I've modeled some holes in here so that I can use, I think I'm gonna use um, some grub screws out of my slot car box, but the usual sort of two millimeter screws you have kicking around, if you do Nerf mods and other things, will do the job. And to just hold it on the front and stop it from rattling off as this thing flies around, because it does get pretty bumpy on there. And so here we go, we just mount it up, we stick it on the front and it clips on like this. And then you put your bolts or screws in the side there to just keep it still and apply your lens to the front of it. Now this does mean that you can't use your end strike barrel lug because there's a bit of a uh, lens adapter in the way. That's a bit of a shame. I had to work around that in the design because the 30 millimeter lens is quite large compared to the space available. So it actually overhangs quite a bit and I had to make a little notch for the front of the blaster in the cover. So we've got our contact lens. We've got our lens from the drone to go onto it. Let's have a test and see what we can do to see how much lag can be taken out of this system. So first we'll have a look outside. We see that it's quite bright. You've got the screen of the receiver with no lens. And you can see that there's quite a bit of lag when the Terra Scout moves. We've put the lens on the top of it and we've turned the brightness down to a dimmer but playable level. I think that's a little bit more playable. I'm certainly going to be happier trundling this around and popping shots at people if I get the opportunity. It's not lightning fast. It's not playable if you're a gamer. You know, if, if this was a computer game, it would still be absolutely awful. But it's so much better than the standard setup. So I've been running this guy about a week now and I've noticed that when you're indoors or if you're outside and it's cloudy, that's when this really shines or doesn't shine because it's cloudy. <laughs> Never mind. I think that's because if the ambient light level is low enough that when you turn the filter down, it goes almost completely black on the receiver screen, then you're in good territory for giving the little chips inside this less work to do because the way light is perceived, particularly by the human eye, is not linear. So if you think it's gone down half the amount, it may well have gone down a significant amount and the little electronic chips will see far less light than your eye is perceiving. So there we go. Bright sunlight, about a 24% reduction. More if you're using it in slightly duller conditions or indoors. I'm happy with that. So you want to have a crack at this yourself. Well, what you're going to need is the 3D printed contact lens cover, which I have designed. I'm going to stick that online. You need a couple of screws to uh, get that on with. Make sure your printer is reasonably well set up. I mean, I'm printing this in a very coarse resolution. It's 0.24 mil. And really, if you print it any finer than that, the tolerances start to get a little bit loose. So you're going to end up with um, your lens a little bit loose and, and other things. So, you know, print it quickly, coarse resolution, and you should be all right. And you can stick that on adjust your light levels and go flying around for some happy happy nerfing. So all that's left to do is just have a trundle around and shoot some stuff. And that's it, we've finished with our Terra Scout. It's way more usable, and I hope you can do the same to yours and have much more fun nerfing with it. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to discuss this or any other mods, we have a little Discord channel. You have a look down below and you'll be able to find that. Leave us a comment, let us know how it worked out for you or what other mods you'd like to see for the Terra Scout. There are a few in the bag. It's actually sitting on some replacement wheels at the moment, which are gonna go on it, hopefully get it a bit more speed. The next mod in the Terra Scout series will be on the end screen somewhere. If you're enjoying the mods to the Terra Scout, there will be more. Hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell which will let you know when the next video is out and I'll see you all in the next one.